Give me Daniel chapter 9 verse 11. Now you're going to see that the curses of the Bible only fell onto the children of Israel. And the brother said that they were upon us for a sign and for a wonder and upon our seed forever. So these curses are going to follow us wherever we go. Now Daniel prophesied that these curses did fall on us. Now read. Daniel chapter 9 verse 11. Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law. So all Israel have breaking God's laws. All of us, all you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, read. Even by departing that they might, might not obey thy voice. So the voice is the Bible. You guys have not been obeying the Bible. You blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Today is the Sabbath day of the Lord. You shouldn't be buying. You shouldn't be selling. You shouldn't be cooking. Right. That's how we know. Read. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us. So the curses have been poured upon us. So we're going to read some of the curses that fell upon the children of Israel. But continue. And the oath that is written in the law of Moses. So there was an oath, a promise, that breaking God's laws, that there were going to be consequences. Now, consequences are a good or bad thing. Of course they're bad, they're consequences. You do something wrong, you gotta pay the price. And we're gonna go through some of the prices that we had to pay over the years. Read. The servant of God, because we have sinned against him, and he have confirmed his words, which he spake against us and against our judges Read. that judged us by bringing upon us a great evil. So God has brung a great evil upon us, the children of Israel. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. Now, 28, verse 28. Yeah, shalom. Okay, come, come to the front, come to the front. What's your name, brother? Daniel. Daniel? Elisha. Nice to meet you. Now, what's your question? Get that in Deuteronomy. Now, according to you, do you see yourself on the sign? Come on in front. Do I see myself? Yes. Your father. Get him, boys. My father? Yeah. What was your father? What land he came from? What's his nationality? He Haitian. Okay. We're gonna re we're gonna read about that. Now, um, read this. This is what required of you. You see that you're from the tribe of Levi, right? The third one from the tribe of Levi. Let's read. And this is what re what's required of you. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12. And now Israel. Now Israel. As you see, this is the 12 tribes of Israel. According to the Bible, the curses that fell upon these children, we could identify with them according to the Bible. And we're going to bring that out. Read. What do if the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Now, he says to love God. Now, how do you love God? Well, okay. Is, 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 is that all? Is that all? Is it all? Um, Okay, let's go to a dress code. Numbers 15, verse 38. Now, when you love him, you say keep his commandments, right? A commandment is something that he tells you to do and you have to do it, right? If you are from the children of Israel, which you are. You're from the, um, the tribe of Levi. Read. Numbers chapter 15, verse 38. Speak unto the children of Israel. Which you are. You are from the children of Israel. And bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations. It says throughout their generations. What does that mean? It does it mean it does it cease or it continues forever? It continues forever. So the children of Israel are supposed to put fringes on the border of their garments. You see, every man up here in purple have fringes on their garments. And what else? And that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. Now, a ribbon of blue. Was that a commandment or a suggestion? Let's read it from the top. 
God speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes and the borders of their garments. So it tells them to bid them, to make them put fringes on the border of their garments. That's a commandment. Now, the consequences of that commandment, if you're not keeping it when Christ comes back, Zephaniah chapter 1 verse 8. Now you have to know, by us not keeping those commandments, that's why you see the plagues plaguing our people in different countries and different places where we are scattered. It's because we keep breaking God's laws. Now read this. Zephaniah chapter 1 verse 8. And it shall come to pass in the day of the... It says it shall come to pass. Is that future tense or present? It shall come to pass. It will happen, right? Go ahead, read. In the day of the Lord's sacrifice. Who's the Lord? Christ. Lord of Lord, King of Kings. Let's read. That I will punish the princes and the king's children. Who are the princes and the king's children? Who are the children of the most of the most high God? Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. Hold that. We're going to get back to that. God chose a certain group of people. A nation of people. And it was a promise that was passed down. You know that promise, right? To Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob's name was changed to Israel, and he became a nation. Twelve tribes. Now, he chose those nations. He chose that nation to keep his laws. Go read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. Unto the Lord thy God. Is that a, possess a possessive word? Thy God? Or is, it, is he saying everybody? Read it again. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 6. For thou art an holy people. So he says thou art an holy people. He didn't say everybody. He says thou. Do you know who he's speaking to in the book of Deuteronomy? Deuteronomy 1 and 1. We're going to go through a quick history. You're going you're gonna to see everything. We're going to go back into the scriptures, and we're going to bring it out for you. He's speaking to the children of Israel in the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 1. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. No, all nations. Israel. Nah, to the Chinese. Israel. To the Japanese. Israel. To the Israelites. You understand? So Moses was only speaking to the Israelites. Now back to Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Above all people. They go to separation. Above all people. So you know he's not saying everyone. He's saying, you Israelites have chosen you to be a special people among all other people. And he placed them above everybody else. You understand? All right, now go back to Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 8. So you know, the Lord's children are the children of Israel because that's who he chose. You understand that? All right, read. Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 8. And it shall come to pass. In the day of the Lord's sacrifice. So remember, this is a future prophecy. This is going to happen in the future. And the Lord's sacrifice. That I will punish the princes and the king's children. And all such are clothed with strange apparel. What is in apparel? Punishment. Huh? Punishment. An apparel. What is in apparel? Your clothing. So anybody in a strange appearance to God, which, what, what would be in a strange appearance to God? You not abiding by his commandments. You not having the border of blue with fringes if you're from the nation of Israel. You understand? That's why he says, remember, who are the Lord's children? The children of Israel. So this, this prophecy is only for us. So when he comes back, and you're, in, and you're in a strange apparel, you will be punished. That means death for you. There's no, oh, look, I'm going to talk to you later. Go sit and time out. No, it's off with your head. He's killing you. Now, we're going to prove, according to the Bible, that you are from the, from the, um, from the tribe of Levi, from the nation of Israel. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. Remember, the book of Deuteronomy, he's, he's only speaking, Moses is only speaking to the children of Israel. Now read. 
Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass. Again, it shall come to pass. So future, future prophecy. Let's go. If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So what does that mean? If you disobey, right? Okay, read. To observe, to do all his commandments. No, some. All his commandments. So if you disobey to do his commandments, what's going to happen? And his statutes, uh -huh. which I command thee this day, that all these curses. No, blessings. Curses. Curses. What are curses? Are they good or bad things? What? Bad things. All right. Now we're going to, can you finish that? Yeah. Shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So all these curses are going to come upon you and overtake you. So these curses are going to be on what children? What nation of people? Not Israelites. On the Israelites. Hey, that brother got some sense. He got some sense. Hey, pay attention. Now let's read. I'm going to verse 28, 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 28. The Lord shall smite thee with madness and blindness and astonishment of heart. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind gropeth in darkness. And thou shalt not prosper in thy way. Now, as a nation of people, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, are we prospering? Are we prospering as a people? Look, go, look in your neighborhoods. The, the Israelites, according to the Bible, we, matter of fact, let's let's go to Deuteronomy chapter twenty-eight, verse sixty-eight. We're gonna go. We're gonna go straight to the point. Now, the nation, the children of Israel, curses fell upon them. Right now, what's the curses fell because they disobeyed God's commandments. This is one. This is one pinnacle curse. Pivotal curse. Pivotal curse. Go read Deuteronomy chapter twenty-eight, verse sixty-eight. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Now, he's going to bring the children of Israel into Egypt again with ships. When did the children of Israel ever go back into Egypt on ships? Did they ever teach you that in Sunday school? What does the word Egypt mean? Egypt is synonymous for the word bondage. When we were in Egypt, we had to serve as slaves. He says he's going to bring us back into Egypt again with ships. What people do you know that we into Egypt, that we into bondage on ships? Read the book of Exodus, chapter twenty and verse two. I am the Lord thy God, which I have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So God brought us out of the house of bondage, out of Egypt. So bondage. Is what, 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 what word can you replace for bondage? What does the word bondage mean? Tied down. It's slavery. Now back to Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Now remember, it says, it shall come to pass the curses. So this happened what? In 1492, with Christopher Columbus, Hernandez Cortez to the Hispanics. It also happened in 1619, when the Europeans brought the so-called Africans from the west coast of Africa when they were really the Israelites. Now read. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So the Lord shall bring you into bondage, slavery with ships. What people did that happen to? What people you know went into slavery on ships? What people? But did it happen to anybody else? Are we are we we are for our people? We are for our people. Why why we've been taught all these years to hate each to hate our, our own people and love the oppressors to love the people who have done us wrong all these years. But yet you haven't looked for your brother or your sister to tell them, look, we need to get ourselves up. Oh, should we all? Give me um, Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse... Uh, oh, did he? 
So did, so did Jesus Christ come for all people or he came for the children of Israel, according to the Bible? Let's 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 get that. Let's get that. We got it. Matthew 15. Matthew chapter 15, verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So Jesus Christ, out of his own mouth, said he only came. He was only sent for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Why are the children lost? Why are they lost? Why are the sheep lost? Lack of, they don't know who they are. Like when I asked you, who do you descend from? You look and you see Levi for Haitians and you're like, how do, I, how do I descend from these people? We just read on one of the curses that we would be brought into slavery on what? On ships. My people got off on slavery on ships. Did your people did not? Who know Hebrew? The Hebrew, it doesn't matter about Hebrew. Bring, bring that at Isaiah chapter 28. What, yeah, yeah, wait, yeah, everything decently in order. Wait, you have any questions? You can wait and we'll answer your questions later. But, bro, bro, yeah, let's go. Go ahead. But, but, we, we read, we read that, the, that Jesus came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. We are lost because we don't know who we are. We, we were discontinued from our heritage because we were breaking God's laws. Matter of fact, bring that out in one of the curses. You're going to see that the curses, remember, the curses fell on the children of Israel. There's a curse. We're going to bring that out in Deuteronomy chapter 28, where it says we will forget who we are. We will, we will become a proverb and a byword. Go ahead, read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment. What's an astonishment? Astonishment. When people look at you like, wow, look, look, they got their pants sagging. We only people that sag our pants all the way down to the knees. Everybody else, what they they proper, they got it to their waist, but we're the astonishment. When they look at us, they're like, damn, why they act like that? Why they always jumping people? Why they always robbing their own people? Why our neighborhoods look like a slum and theirs look like a garden? Let's go read. A proverb. A proverb. A wise saying. Like, oh, Haitians only good for eating watermelons. Come on, bro. Read. And a byword. And a byword. That's being called outside your God-given name. You were called Haitians. Well, they gave us that name. We were named after that land. After we got our freedom. Right? Because we, the land is called Aiti. Why is, it, why is it pronounced a whole different name in English? Because they gave it to us. And they call you after the name of the land. We were brought to that land. That's not our land. Our homeland is Jerusalem. That's right. It was conquered in 70 AD by Vespasian and Titus. And we fled into Africa to hide amongst the black people just like us because they were persecuting us. It was prophesied in Joel chapter 2. We can read that right now. Matter of fact, let's read that. Chapter 3. So, remember, the children of Israel would become a proverb, an astonishment, and a byword. That's us. It fits us. We were put on slave ships. And so, and we're going to read about who sold us. Let's go. Joel, chapter 3, verse 1. For behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem. So he's going to bring us into captivity again. Let's go read. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. So Jehoshaphat is in the Middle East. He's going to bring us back into the, they're going to, he's going to bring them back into the land of Jehoshaphat. Go ahead, read. And will plead with them there for my people. So God is going to plead for his people. That's how you know it's not all people. Go ahead, read. And for my heritage, Israel. Israel. Who was God's people when we read in Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6? When Moses, exactly, he spoke to only the Israelites. He says, you are my people. Go ahead, read. Whom they have scattered among the nations. They have scattered amongst the nations. Right. What happened in slavery? We were scattered, man. That only fits us. That only fits us. Now read. And parted my land, and they have cast lots for my people. You know what casting lots mean? You ever been at a bidding auction where they be like, oh, 2020 20 sold to him with Master Charles this? They cast lots for our people. They sold us. You can see it 
on this son at this auction. Don't play with the word of God like this. They cast lots. They didn't, they didn't do that to their people. It only happened to our people. And they're going to tell you who sold us and to who. Let's go. And have given a boy for an harlot. So if you give a boy for an harlot, meaning a whore, who's penetrating that boy? Now you know who's, well, I'm not going to bring that up. Let's go read. And sold a girl for wine. And they sold a girl for wine. What happens when we, when we were young and we had wine with women? What happened, bro? Yeah, you, you already know. So if you have a group of women and you get them drunk and you're their slave master, what you think is going to happen? Read. That they might drink. Yay. And what have ye to do with me, O Tyree and Zidon? Tyree and Zidon are African cities in lower Lebanon. Southern Lebanon. These are Africans. Go ahead, read. And all the coast of Palestine. Palestines are the Arabs. So you have the Africans and Arabs. You ever heard about the Trans-Saharan slave trade? That's when the Arabs were selling us. Let's go, read. Will ye render me a recompense? Mm -hmm. And if ye recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your own head? So God is telling you that he would not accept any, any, anything that could re reward them or basically blot out what they did to us. Go ahead, read. Because you have taken my silver and my gold and I've carried into your temples my goodly pleasant things. Now here's the point, read. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecian. Who are the Greeks? Who are the Grecians? Because he said Tyre and Zidon in the coast of Palestine have sold the children of Judah to the Grecians. Who are the Greeks? What nationality are the Greeks? Do you know? It, are the, it is the, your European. It is the so-called white man. Because he is not white. He is red. So it tells you in the Bible that the people that were actually putting you on slave ships were the Africans and the Arabs. And they were selling you to the so-called white man. And that's how you were scattered. That's how you were scattered. It's prophesied in the Bible. And he's going to plead for us, meaning we're not in our homeland. He's going to plead for us. He's going to bring us back. Now, bring Isaiah back to um, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. There are some points that you need to read in this one. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So he's going to bring us into Egypt again with ships. Slavery, remember that. He's going to bring us into slavery with ships. Now read. By the way, well, I spank unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. Meaning our homeland, we will see it no more again. Since we got off those ships, have we ever gone back? Have we ever gone back? Have, have anybody came and said, hey, you know, we want you back? We, we sold you a long time ago. They, did they ever come back for us? No, why not? Let's keep reading. And there... You shall be sold unto your enemies. Like it or not, we were sold to our enemies. You are still our enemies till this day because you keep us oppressed. You do not want us to know who we are. Because you have to understand, us as the children of Israel are supposed to be ruling this earth with God's laws. And you are supposed to abide by it. But you guys have been twisting the word for so long that we don't know who we are and what we're supposed to be doing. So it's high time that we awake. And we have awoken. And we're going to teach our people. And we're going to bring us back into rulership. That's right. Now read. For bondmen and bondwomen. So we were sold for bondmen, slave men, and slave women. Go ahead. And no man shall buy you. Meaning no person shall redeem us out of that captivity. It's only one man that could take us out of that. And that's Jesus the Christ, our King, our Savior, our Messiah. Shalom, Israel. I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ.
YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.